In a number of previous videos, I have shown you how we can connect Riedel smart panels like this one, which is a one rack unit panel. It's a RSP. 1216 HL. It has the control panel application installed. It means that we can connect to it using NMOS protocols. And the way we do it is by installing a package called XPanel Riedel Smart Panel. When you have done that, you set up an IP address of the panel and a port number for the NMOS communication. Sorry, there's no auto discovery, but <clears throat> that's how it works. Uh, actually, right now I have set it up with two panels. I have both a uh, a 32 version and the 16 version here, but we are being will be using the uh, 16 version. This one, um, yeah. So that that's like the software side of things. Uh, in the logs, we can confirm by reading the logs that the software has correctly connected to the panels and are translating them into the raw panel protocol that we can integrate with Reactor. So I'm currently running on a blue pill. Could be any blue pill platform device from Skahoi. That's essentially everything we sell. And by the way, what are we selling? If you go to darkroomskahoi.com, you have a beautiful uh, page with a lot of pictures of our products. So this is a quick and nice way to actually go through it. And there are shop links and everything else so you can read more about these. But this is actually like the press photo website where you can find pictures of all our products, but also great for browsing, isn't it? So um, whatever we want to do today, um, yeah, whatever we are fancying, you know, this website would allow us to actually look at our products in, in beautiful high res details if, if you want to explore what we are selling. This is what we do. We make and sell hardware panels. And the software reactor we are working with today is basically binding together devices that we control with the hardware panels that we make. But instead of a Skahoi panel today, we'll be using a Riedel smart panel because many of you guys have these around the globe. So let's just add one. And you see the moment I added it, it is already coming up with some content. It is uh, selecting a generic quick class, which is more like a random selection of some sort of configuration that is in the system already. But we are going to make our own custom configuration. So for this one, we'll have Friday fun. Yes. So there we go. The panel is blank right now, but now we'll start putting something onto it. Well, before we do so, I suggest that we add a few devices. So I would just go here and add devices and hopefully we have something on the network. There would be nice things like a, I'm looking for an ASM switcher. That's like my go-to thing. ATEM 2ME Constellation HD. That sounds like a nice choice. So we'll pick that one. But let's also just for the fun of it add, I, I saw a Kumo router. So I should be able to also select a Kumo router here. Let's see the IP address is 87. That's probably good to know. So if I add that 87, we will see the Kumo router. Uh, right here, let's see what happens if I pick a destination. We can see that destination has source number four routed to it. Okay, nice. All right, good. So far, so good. So back in here, I want to go to configuration. And now what you see, if I close this tab down, is Reactor 2.0. Here, we select the configuration that we just created, Friday Fun, and voila, you see the Riedel Smart Panel in this display. Isn't it nice? Yes. All right, <clears throat> so what I can do is to assign functionality to the button. So the, the first buttons I want to do here is make it a little, um, basically a, a little program preview bus for my ATEM switcher. So I'll select this one and also this one, and I'm holding down my command key right now. So guys, I'm actually trying to be a little bit sensitive to what I press because we have two things. We have the um, the element behind and this element. This element is the rotary part of the knob and uh, it has rotary functionality and it also has push functionality like a rotary encoder on a Skyway product. So these click, 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 click when you push. That's the same you have here. Click, 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 and you can also push them with your fingernail. But the exterior lever key, that is actually set up like a four-way button on a Skahoi or a two-way button. So it has detection of the lower edge and the upper edge of the button. All right, so we'll be, um, and, and that is the exterior one. And that's also the one that drives the display. So I'll be careful to select these for my little demo, all right? 
So six of these, because I want to have cut on auto, and then I'll pick my ATEM constellation, I'll go into program preview, and I'll use this one click behavior functionality to select program preview select. Then I'll pick the ME row number one and input number one. Okay. So after having done this, I would be able to go into batch edit. And then if I place my cursor here and pl press the plus one button, I can quickly change this to input number one to six. And there we go. Let's just zoom in here in my simulation tool. So you can see that it is in fact the same as what you see on the smart panel that is also shown here in the simulator. Uh, actually, word of warning, on the smart panel, we can show text line one and the title. The title is shown beneath. Text line number one is in the middle of the display. This is how Riedel does it. They just give us access to those two labels and they are mapped up with the text line one and also the title in here. Almost perfect. The thing is that we usually have a text line two as well. So from time to time, we may have behaviors that use text line two and you won't see that on the smart panel. But at, at this point, we're actually getting pretty far with what we have. Now, let's just select this one. And then I am curious to see a cut. What about cut? Yes, we have a cut transition there for this one. And I need an ME row. And then I want auto over here. Let's search up audio, auto and select. And we pick this one. All right. So now we also have cut an auto. Uh, actually, uh, let's try it. Cut. And then I have preview, select, cut. Preview, select, cut, preview, select, cut. I have a video switcher on a smart panel. Pretty quick, wasn't it? What if I wanted to have like a shift level? So maybe what we do is to uh, create shifted. And in shifted state, we can basically now select the same element here. Okay. And then on these, I could have program preview and then just ME row and then pick an input and then go to the batch editor and I'll pick input number six and then go all the way up to 10 like this. <clears throat> so I, when I'm in the shifted state, as you can see, I can now do the same here. It's just, you know, these five as I go forth and back between normal and shifted, normal and shifted, you see that change around. On purpose, I left out input number one, ah, uh, six, sorry, because actually I, what, what I'm going to do now is to change this over to not um, have input six on it, but instead be system navigation. So I'll go in here, shift, hold down. Okay, like that. So actually now this one is a shift key. And as I'm pressing it, oh, sorry about that. Ah, now I did a mistake. Inside the shifted state, this is where I put the shift key. I should stop doing that. The thing is in the shifted state, if you put a behavior on anything there, and you don't put it out here in normal, then when you go back to normal, it's gone, right? So, and it's in here and shifted. So I need to select this one. I need to delete it. So I'll just right click on this one and delete behaviors. And now you'll see the underlying input six behavior on the normal uh, shine through. So I'll bring that up and I'll just exit this and then I'll pick shift hold down like that. So now both in the shifted state and in the normal state, I have the same here. Let's try it out. And notice as I'm pressing it, you see that the, the normal shifted variable is changing around here. And as I'm now holding it down and shifted, I have, I better use double um, buttons, you know, both fingers like that. Actually, it feels like I should not hold this down. It doesn't feel right. But if I go to normal state, I can simply go back and change it into a toggle. And now you'll see that the shift is basically toggling on, off, on, off. Now, beautiful thing about um, Reactor 2.0 is that not only it, it works like setting up a stream deck where you have multiple pages. But in addition, because we're in a broadcast context, many of you guys will appreciate having the shifted level like as a second uh, dimension to each page. And that's what I just showed you here that we have implemented by default, like natively in the system, we have given you the normal and the shifted state on every single page. And in the shifted state, you are basically having transparency through so that you only need to define everything on the normal state like cut and auto, but if you put anything on the shifted level, then it is going to override, but shine through to what was on normal in cases where you don't override it. But now what I want to do now is to add another page here. 
I will not make it, in this case, I'll not make it a transparent page. I'll disable that and create this. And basically what happens, uh, okay, so that would be my Kumo router. I wanna do a little Kumo router thingy. On the Kumo layer, I wanna do routing. So what I'll do here is to select the first one. In this case, the AJ Kumo actions doesn't have a lot of one click behavior. So I'll just have to manually add these parameters, but it's not too difficult. Basically we get in here, we have a parameter list. And if you scroll through this, you'll find for a video router, there's typically one called route input to output. And with this one, you have to define which output is it that you want to operate on. I'll select output number one. So I'll just select one. Yes, like this, submit. So we are talking to device ID number one. That's fine. That's the first Kumo router we have added, output number one. But I need to change this one because I don't know why, but by default, it picked a behavior that will um, allow me to browse through sources. So it doesn't make a lot of sense. I'll just select one called... Uh, value directly, set value directly. So with this one, I get an option to set an input. So that input would be like two. Notice that it's already showing me something here in the simulation. It says none because there's nothing selected. Now it says two and I could put in my my source name like that, um, input two. I could also type that in. All right, so we now have that on the first button here. Then I will copy this one and then I'll paste it in on the second one and on the second one I'll essentially change this to three and then uh, also in three so that we have a different label. All right so I am now able to basically route between these two over here and if we see the Kumo routers UI you can actually see this is happening behind the scenes. So I can move on like this I can basically copy to the next one so I can continue the process like this and uh, I could bring them all up in a batch editor if I wanted to so that I could change my mm, so-called match value. Let me see, uh, we need to observe the key order so let's just select this one first then select this, this and this because that defines which order the batch editor is showing it in. So that would be number two um, and uh, three so four and five and let me see if there is maybe we need to set these label values manually yes unfortunately we need to do that so i'll just quickly fix this but it's done now and we see oh, let's just check all right so we have routing going on for all of these so that's just super cool let's check with the kumo UI, it is actually routing. Nice. All right, so all that we need right now, and notice this is Reactor 2.0. I have now two pages. I can go to the background page where we have the ATEM connectivity, where I was actually routing. I had a like a, a cut bus for an uh, ATEM switcher. And then if I go to the Kumo router, I now substitute this whole section for router control. All I need now is navigation. And in this case, let's just go to the background layer on this button here, we would then pick navigation, switch page, and it currently says background. So what I need to do is, uh, yeah, you could of course do this, um, maybe change by step. What happens if I, if I click it now, then it actually changed to the next one, which would be this. But the thing is on the Kumo layer, we have non-transparency here. It means that we actually need to either two things, we place the same action. So I could click here and make one called switch page. And actually, if I do that, we would now have this working on both of these. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you got curious on Reactor 2.0, how to create pages of functionality on a real smart panel, on a Skyhoy product, on a Stream Deck, X keys, whatever. We can connect with raw panel into Reactor.